This video is on how to clean the Glock 43X. I know everyone has their own way of doing things, including myself, so for training purposes, we're going to go right along with the Glock owner's manual. I made this video for total beginners, so I hope it helps you out. I do like this gun a lot, so I'm going to talk about it for a minute before we get to cleaning. When the 43X was first released, I didn't dislike it, but I didn't have much of an interest until my buddy Kent purchased one. The first thing I noticed was how thin it was. It conceals really well, and it's very comfortable to carry. I'm a fan of lightweight carry guns, especially the 19, that's what I usually carry, but this one's lighter, smaller, and more concealable. We didn't have paper with us at the range, so we just shot steel, but this is a small gun and I don't think it's necessarily made for hitting bullseyes anyway. Kent didn't really need a warm up or have to get used to this gun at all, he pulled it right out of the box and started ringing steel at about 25 yards. Kent carries a 17 on duty, so he got this one for his off duty carry, I think he made a good choice. The one pictured here is Kent's gun. I actually took this picture right after the range. Notice it has the standard Glock sights, and the one that I'm going to be cleaning has the Mariglow bolt sights. So I never got to test Kent's gun on paper, but when I got mine with the Mariglow bolt sights, I did shoot a little bit left, even using every bit of my fundamentals. So I just drifted the sights to the right a little bit, and it solved the problem right away. Point of aim, point of impact, no problem. From what I've seen, I'd say the reliability of the 43X is excellent. If you have a high grip and you touch the slide a little too much, it will cause the slide not to lock back on an empty chamber, but that's with any semi-automatic. I definitely would not say that's a reliability issue. It's just a little easier to do with a 43X because of its small size, nothing you can't train out of. Since I purchased my 43X, I fired various brands of 115 grain FMJ, 65 grain Plus P Underwood Extreme Defender, 70 grain Underwood Hero hollow points, and 124 grain Winchester Ranger plus P. I didn't have any issues with any of those rounds, and I suspect this gun will probably eat anything. This range footage was shot in Texas when it's about 100 degrees outside and lots of humidity, and this footage here was shot in the Nevada desert when it's about 35 degrees and pretty much no humidity. I've kept my 43X in my truck for about two years now. And I do take it out and clean it about every three months. Not that it needs it. It's a Glock and it's probably going to function no matter what. But I like to keep my weapons 100% good to go. And I like that extra peace of mind knowing that I've kept my weapon perfectly maintained. My 43X has seen all the seasons in both Texas and Nevada. So this just goes to show that you can keep your gun in your car year round if you want to. As long as you take it out every few months and clean it, I'm pretty sure you're not going to have any problems with it at all. Which brings me to the next thing I want to talk about. The reason I keep the 43X as my vehicle gun is because of the size and weight. It's so small I can keep it really well hidden in my truck. No one's going to find it. I mean, you'd probably have to disassemble the vehicle in order to find this gun. But at the same time, I have it in a place where I can quickly and easily deploy it if needed. And I'm on the road a lot, so if my vehicle was to break down in the middle of nowhere, I can easily conceal this inside the waistband no matter what type of clothing I'm wearing, whether it be jeans or sweatpants or shorts or whatever. It's really light, and it's not going to weigh me down if I had to go for a long walk. This hiding spot I had in my vehicle is so small, it doesn't have room for extra magazines. So all I had was the gun with the 10 round magazine inside it. But now that Shield Arms came out with a 15 round magazine for the 43X, this gun's even better. 15 rounds in the mag and one in the chamber of really hot Underwood ammo is plenty for a backup vehicle gun. And I say backup because I always have my everyday carry with me. I think this is an awesome gun for both beginners and advanced and everything in between. This is Dr. Hinojosa giving instruction on the 43X to his nephew. His nephew's fired a 22 rifle a few times, but this is his first time firing a pistol chambered to 9mm. He caught on really quick and he had no problem ringing steel with a 43X all day long. I could go on a lot longer about this gun because I like it so much, but you're here to clean, so let's get started. Just know that I would like to, but it's impossible to go the perfect speed for everyone out there, so if I'm going too slow, fast forward. If I'm going too fast, just pause it and rewind. Everyone does it when they're learning, no big deal. You're going to need a few things, and I'll put links to everything in the notes below. A cleaning rod, a patch holder, a bronze bore brush, a jag, cleaning patches, or you can use a cut-up t-shirt, CLP, a bore snake, and I left it out of the photo, but you're going to need cotton swabs, a nylon brush, and a cleaning rag. Just make sure it's something soft, nothing abrasive. I'm going to start out with an empty weapon, but of course I'm going to double check, and always keep it pointed in a safe direction, even if you think it's unloaded. This is your slide stop, this is your slide lock, and this is your magazine catch. 
So press the magazine catch button and drop the magazine. Then work the slide a few times. If you somehow left ammo inside, it's going to eject at this point. Push the slide stop lever up to hold the slide back. Now visually and physically inspect the chamber to make sure it's empty. Press the slide lock downward and let the slide go back to the original position. Now you'll have to pull the trigger. Notice that the slide lock is on both sides. Make something of a C-clamp with your strong hand and pull the slide back about an eighth of an inch. As you're holding the slide back, pull the slide lock levers on both sides downward. Then release the slide, let it go forward, and just guide it off the frame. Now pull the recoil spring from chamber in to muzzle in, and it'll pop right out. Push the barrel from the hood. The lug will pop up, grab it by the lug, and pull it right out. Now screw on your bore brush. Make sure it says 357, 9 millimeter, 38, or 380. Or you can just use the nylon brush that came in the box. Just make sure you're using either bronze or nylon. You never want to use any type of abrasive metal. And that goes for all of my cleaning gear. I would never use anything that has any chance of scratching my gun. Pour CLP onto the brush, and I'm going to push it through only one way. I'm going from chamber in to muzzle in. The reason is it doesn't make any sense at all to push the dirt out and pull it right back in. So I push the rod through, chamber in to muzzle in, I remove the brush, I pull the rod out, and then I put the brush back on and repeat the process. This is the way you would clean a high precision rifle, so why not clean your pistol the same way? It only takes a few extra seconds and it doesn't hurt anything. And make sure you're pushing the rod through as you're holding the handle. The handle allows the rod to spin freely. This allows the bristles on the brush to spin freely within inside the rifling, giving it a good clean. If you were to hold the rod and push it straight through, not allowing it to spin freely, the bristles are just going to scrape right over the rifling and you won't get a good clean. After I push the bore brush through a few times, I attach the cleaning jag. You can use the patch holder if you want to, but I get better results with the jag. And of course, like all of your attachments, make sure it's made for 9mm. So add CLP to your cleaning patch, or in this case, cut up t-shirt. Put it on top of the jag and push it through. Just like the brush, you're going to do this only one way, from chamber end to muzzle end. The number of patches you push through is going to depend on how much you've been shooting. This is what the first patch looked like. Obviously, I didn't shoot it very much. It's usually much dirtier than that on the first patch. So this is my fourth patch, almost clean. And this is the fifth patch. And that looks good enough for me. So you're just going to keep running patches through until they come out clean just like that. And you want to make sure the bore is dry also. You don't need to leave excess CLP inside the bore. Add CLP to your nylon brush and scrub the outside of the barrel. I refer to this whole piece as the barrel, but the top of it is the hood. That's the feed ramp and chamber. That's the lug right there. And the inside of the barrel is the bore. Pay special attention to the feed ramp. You'll notice sometimes that's the hardest part to clean on this piece. If you need to, just really dig into it with your fingernail and your cleaning rag. When the feed ramp's completely clean, it should look just like that. Now I'm going to wipe off the excess CLP from the barrel, leaving just a light coat. But only on the outer surfaces. Remember that the inside of the bore needs to be dry. Now take your 9mm sized bore snake. That's the weighted end right there. Take the weighted end, drop it into the chamber, and pull it out through the muzzle end. Do this a few times. Now this is why I use a bore snake. It looks perfect inside, not even a speck of dust. It actually looks better than it did when it came from the factory. I said I was going to go right along with the Glock owner's manual. The owner's manual actually doesn't mention anything about a bore snake. This is just a little extra step that I take to be thorough. 
Now clean the recoil spring. Add CLP to your nylon brush. Scrub in between the coils and on both ends. Then wipe it off and you're done. Now I'm going to clean the frame. And by the way, I'm not doing this in any particular order. Add CLP to your nylon brush and scrub all visible surfaces inside and out. Now I'm going to go through and find detail with a cotton swab, and I pay particular attention to the rails. Now leave a light coat of lube on all metal surfaces and place one drop of CLP at the rear end of the trigger bar where it touches the connector. Now wipe off all the excess CLP and you're done with the frame. Now let's clean the slide. Add CLP to your brush and start going through all visible surfaces, paying particular attention to the rail channels. Now you'll have to scrub the breech face really well because it gets dirty, but make sure you don't leak excess CLP down into that channel that the firing pin comes out of. Also be careful not to leak CLP down into the striker channel here. Make sure you clean behind the extractor really well. That's that little hook device you see sticking out next to the breech face. Now place a drop of CLP on the cotton swab and lube both rail channels. Now wipe off the excess CLP, but do leave a light film of CLP on the outer surfaces and you're done with the slide. Now let's clean the magazine. I don't do a complete disassembly of the magazine every time I shoot unless I dropped it in dirt, mud, or sand or something like that. Or if it's just been a really long time since I've broken it down. As you're cleaning, make sure you don't leak any CLP down into the magazine. It's easy to get CLP in the witness holes and around the follower if you're not careful. There's no need to leave CLP on the magazine, so make sure you wipe it completely dry. Let's reassemble the slide. Grab the barrel, place it back in the slide. Make sure you got the correct lock up, just like so. Now reinstall the recoil spring. It goes just like that. Just make sure that the flat metal piece is resting against the lug like that. Now carefully line up the slide with the frame and push the slide all the way back. Now let's do a function check. Work the slide, pull the trigger, but don't let it go. Keep holding the trigger, Pull the slide back, make sure the trigger resets, then pull it again. If you hear it click, you're good to go. I also like to make sure the slide is going to lock back on an empty magazine. So I insert the magazine and pull the slide back. As long as it locks back, everything's good. Congratulations, you're done. If you like this video, buy something from us at SkullCrush.com.